Uh, Russ Hebert is uh, on the board of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association of Canada. He's located just outside of Vancouver. Um, and uh, the reason we've saved him to last is because uh, among his experiences, he spent over a decade as a member of parliament in the Canadian parliament. So he's actually been on the receiving end of advocacy and has a unique perspective to bring us. Russ, tell us a little bit about your homeschooling journey and, and, uh, and tell us what you'd like us, us to know about advocacy, please. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> the topic of how to start a legal defense organization in your country uh, is easily connected to the question of how to influence policymakers, as it's the policymakers that create the laws that you're trying to change or use to protect the families that you seek to represent. So as Peter mentioned, I'm a homeschooling father of four kids and a former lawyer and politician who was elected four times as a federal member of parliament in Canada. And I can tell you, and I'll allude to it probably more later, but one of the highlights for me was experiencing those families that you earlier speakers talked about coming to my office and seeing how respectful and intelligent and uh, knowledgeable they were in the questions that they asked as they were learning about government. But let me start more at the beginning of my story. I was first introduced to home education when I was a new MP and was asked to bring greetings on behalf of my government at a regional home education conference. It was there that I met a professional psychologist and international authority on child development by the name of Dr. Gordon Neufeld. The key theme of his speech, which is also the subject of his best-selling book, was a message to parents to hold on to your kids. His message was parents need to make sure that they matter more to their children than their children's friends do. His research showed a disturbing trend of children, mostly in institutional school settings, looking to their peers for their values, their identity, and codes of behavior as a result of spending the vast majority of their time with kids of their same age. To quote from his book, he says, it is this peer orientation that undermines family cohesion, interferes with healthy development, and fosters a hostile and sexualized youth culture. It results in children becoming overly conformist, desensitized, and alienated, such that being cool matters more to them than anything else." End quote. So when our children came along, my wife and I decided to try home education. I've since become a wholehearted convert to home education and currently serve, as Peter mentioned, on the board for the Homeschool Legal Defense Association in Canada. So when starting a legal defense organization in your country, you need to focus on influencing the public policy or laws in your nation to protect and improve the conditions for parents to educate their children. You do this because it is worthwhile. It is a good for society. It recognizes and supports the fundamental and primary right of all parents the right and obligation for parents to decide how their children will be educated. As we all know, and as has been mentioned, there are some countries that do not recognize this right or substantially hinder this right and make it difficult for parents to exercise this right and responsibility. And the degree of freedom that parents have is an indicator or a measure of the freedom, liberty, and health of the nation in which they live. If a government does not recognize that children are first and foremost under the authority and responsibility of their mother and father and not the state, that is a sign that the government does not truly believe in freedom. Furthermore, the reality is, is that mass institutional education is failing. And so at the very least, nations need to allow and better yet encourage alternative methods of education like home education if for no other reason than to allow competition into what has become a largely monopolized industry. So now that we've established the why to influence, the next question is, which policymakers should you try and influence? Well, instead of trying to influence the bureaucrats or the regulators, focus on the elected officials, as they have the power to change the law and make a lasting impact. Changing the law is more difficult, but once accomplished, will likely be there for a longer period of time. Now, how do you influence them? Well, you start by aligning their interests with your interests. Most of them will be interested in getting reelected and in doing what is best for the society or community in order to get reelected. So show them that by changing the law to support freedom in home education, it will be good for their country and for children and that people will vote for them and volunteer for them to support their leadership in this area. So you start by contacting them. And this is going to get practical, but it's important. Send them, you send them an email or give them a call 
and ask your elected official for a short meeting of 15 to 30 minutes. Don't expect too much. Ask for an online meeting or an in-person meeting in their constituency office or in the Capitol. You're gonna to need to be persistent. As has been mentioned, expect to have to make this request several times. As you do, be nice to their staff as the staff controls whether or not you'll even get a meeting. Remember, they will talk to their boss about how they were treated, especially if they were treated poorly. And yes, we all know that they work for you, but still show honor and express gratitude for their public service. That goes a long way to building a bridge, which is the next point, is to prepare your message carefully with the intent to build that bridge. These are busy people and they receive many requests for meetings. So be prepared and act professional. This is not the time to complain. Be clear and direct about exactly what you're asking for. And if you can, propose a solution if you point out a problem. Practically, write out three to five key points that you wanna make. So for example, you could uh, come to them and explain how difficult it is to comply with the current laws in your country, but then go further and explain how the law could be changed to make it better. And finally, have patience. Recognize that changing the law is a lengthy process. So study that process of how laws are made and changed so that you can understand what needs to happen. If you build a bridge and find an ally, support them between and during elections as well. Volunteer in their campaigns. And when you, and when you find people that are opposed to freedom, work to replace them and find new and better representatives. In conclusion, by getting involved in the public policy process, you will ensure a better future, not only for your children or for the children of your community or your nation, but also for future generations. Thank you, Peter.